Hey, what's up guys? Uh, tonight I'm going to show you two things. Um, one is how to make your own eye to eye Prusik or uh, split tail, whatever you want to call it. Um, actually, it would be like that. So, we're going to go with that first. So, anyways, let me tilt this camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So you're going to pull, it's hard to determine how much tail you need to tie this. So what I do is just take and pull about 10 inches off uh, a bite, whatever you want to call it. You're going to flip it around. <clears throat> Let me get over here where I can tie, where y'all can see it. You're going to flip that around. Come under. You're going to tie a double, double fisherman's knot in this. Under. Let's see. <clears throat> back over. Back up. And then you're going to go back through. Uh, your uh, two loops there. Feed it back through. And bam. If you've tied it right. It's going to be side by side and look like an X on the other side. Now this is a slip knot. It will slide down and pull out if you don't have your carabiner in it. So, alright, I'm going to show you one more time. Get you a bite about 8-10 inches. I'd say 10 because you can dress it down once you get it tied. You're going to go around behind it around it behind it and then you're going to do it again but this time you're going to come you're going to cross that one and go towards your loop and when you come back up to the top here you're going to take your tag in here and you're going to stick it back under your two loops there and you're going to cinch it down pull it tight Okay, and that will cinch down to your eye. What I do is before I cinch it down, I'll put my carabiner through it and cinch it down on there. Now, the easy part is figuring out how long you want between your two knots. Um, and basically what you're gonna do is however long you want that, then you have to, <clears throat> I'll tell you a little trick you can once you tie a knot get a piece of tape and mark this side right here just put the tape around that side of the rope and then pull your knot through and wherever that tape is will tell you exactly how much tag in you need so then you can uh, determine how much you need to tie the other end every time you'll know from then on um, you can leave as much tag sticking out as you want I don't like a whole whole lot sticking out but uh, I do like enough to assure that uh, see what I mean by you can dress it you can pull slack through and fish it through the knot you know until you get enough tag or if you got too much tag sticking out you can put feed it back through that way um, but that's that then you would cut your length however you want it plus however long you want your cord plus ever how much you need to tie your knot and if you mark this with tape right here you know exactly how much um, <clears throat> matter of fact how about I just get a piece of tape and show you or you can just use a pen instead of the tape um, you know <clears throat> so what you're gonna do like I said pull you off some uh, a bottle line flip it around back behind back 
over towards your knot and up and then tuck the tail through like so uh, dress it slide it down and you know that's about how much uh, tag end I leave sticking out tail I leave sticking out you can make it longer if you leave this longer you can always um, this can be adjustable you know if you leave a longer tag in sticking out here then if you need it longer uh, you can retie your knot and you've got extra length there uh, to make it a little longer if you need to but anyways once you get your knot tied and you figure out how much rope you need you can just take and mark it right here on this line right outside your knot pull your knot through and then there's your mark so you know you need that much rope so you can measure that or whatever and uh, you're going to cut ever how long you want this <coughs> uh, cord 15 inches 16 inches whatever and then add that much rope to it now continuous loop Prusik you're going to do the same thing but you're going to do it like you're joining two pieces of rope you're going to use a double fisherman's knot so uh, fisherman's knot they use it to tie a line together uh, basically all you're doing is taking a loop a piece of rope and just making connecting both ends so you're going to go around back over back up and then through there on that one and then same thing over here you're going to go around back over back up and then through on this side and then there's your knot and what you would do once you get them tied is you would just boom slide them together and now you have a continuous loop now this will not be easy to get out once you cinch it down so don't cinch it down till you know you got it where you want it because um, as you apply pressure it bites more and more and more <clears throat> around back around this way sorry back around this way if you go the wrong way <clears throat> how that goes through on this side if you was to go the wrong direction and go that way when you pull it it'll just pop right out there's that and then on this side same thing you'll take your opposite line you'll take the line that's feeding through and you'll tie the same knot going this way go around back towards that knot back up and behind make sure you go behind this line right here cinch it down bam pull them together and there's your prusik continuous loop prusik well i'm going to show you one more time because when i learned how to do this i think i watched um, watched them do it more than once i think i probably watched them three or four times because i wanted to make sure i was doing it right take your two tag ends bring that one around and then back over it cross itself back up like so and then come up on this side no sorry come up on this side back through so that your tail is going the same way it was before you wrapped it 
like that. And then you're going to take this one and go around, behind, back over, back up. And then you're going to take the tail and go behind this or under that. Under this one and under this one, facing back the way that you came from. Got one more little thing I want to show you here. And, um, all right, the next thing I want to show you is a, a DIY Prusik tender or a poor man's Prusik, uh, poor man's tender. Uh, the first thing you need is a key ring and it doesn't need to be one of these new these little flimsy winky dinky things it needs to be one of those the real old school uh, kind of heavy duty one um, and you're gonna have that and some uh, paracord and what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically they think they call this lashing but what you're gonna do is <clears throat> you're gonna basically kind of figure out how much you're gonna double it over like so and you're gonna take that and lay it down you're gonna kind of fit it around your ring and see how much you got there you're gonna need a little bit you're gonna need enough to go all the way back around almost pretty much back to itself again and then what you're going to do <clears throat> is you're going to hold the short end here and uh, you're going to come leave your short end there you're going to start around here wherever your sh your loop stops right here um, basically where they meet right there it ain't got to be perfect um, you're going to take your short end of rope here or your long end of rope here or paracord and you're going to start wrapping it around the keychain and the paracord just start wrapping through the keychain And through the pair or around the paracord. Through the key ring and around the paracord. And just keep wrapping it around. And basically what you're doing is you're lashing the paracord to the key ring just keep going all the way around and you want to do this you know pretty good pretty tight keep your loops as you're wrapping it keep it you know tight up against each other um, you can dress it as you go get a few of them wrapped around you want it tight pretty tight um, And just keep wrapping like I said you want to get it as tight as possible you can you know wrap a couple and then kind of go back and tighten it up whatever is best easiest on you and you're gonna do that until you get back to where you started at basically until you get back around the uh, key ring to where you started on the other side just keep loops looping keeping it you know pretty snug and tight
that right there. All right, now once you get back around to where it meets itself, uh, let me get around here where I can show you this. Once you get it back around to where you've got it lashed all the way around to where it meets itself like that, this is the starting point and this is the end point. What you're gonna do is take the end that you've been wrapping, the piece that you've been wrapping, you're gonna take it and you're gonna feed it through this loop right here just like so and then you're going to take the opposite end so you feed the one the end that you've been wrapping you feed it through that loop that you had there feed it through there and then you're going to take the opposite end and you're going to pull it like that you're going to pull it then you can you know You're gonna pull it tight, pull it as tight as you can pull it. <clears throat> and what's gonna happen is, is when you get, when you pull on this end, that loop, that loop is wrapped through all that wrapping. So it pulls that loop back through and it binds this rope, this piece right here down so it can't pull back out. So basically what's gonna happen is, <clears throat> To say this is your, uh, all right. This is my Prusik and my carabiner, right? Your tender is gonna go on your tag end. It's gonna you're gonna slide that rope through there, slide it up against the bottom of your uh, Prusik knot, tie like like you did your. Uh, your tight eyed prusik, your eye to eye prusik. You can tie a fisherman's knot in that also. That way you can always um, pull it, slide it off your carabiner and uh, adjust or whatever. See? Same thing here. I'm gonna tie one in each uh, end. You'll go tie around, back around it, and then go back through. Your loops there, just like so. And then you could take that end of your Prusik off and put that through there, that through there, and then put your Prusik eye back on there. And then of course, you're going to uh, tighten those down, cinch them down. You're gonna cut off the excess. Make sure you got it the right length first before you go cutting it off. And what you're going, what you want is to be able. To, you want to hold this, and when you pull up on this carabiner, it should slide your Prusik. If you don't have that Prusik tender on there, let me show you. It won't slide up, but if you have that Prusik tender on there and you pull on that carabiner, it slides it right up. So, that is how it works. And you have your Prusik tender on there. Do y'all think you got it or uh, what you... That's how it is, that's how a homemade Prusik tender with a homemade or a hand tied tied eye. Once you tied that fisherman's knot on there, like you can come back and uh, cut.
cut that off cut that off singe the ends you always want to singe the ends of your paracord your climbing rope your uh, prusik cord whatever if you don't the outer shell will separate from the it will slide it will milk itself down there's that that actually probably wouldn't hurt for that to be just a tad shorter your uh, prusik I mean your uh, tender tails the tails of your prusik tender it wouldn't hurt for those to be a tad shorter then you will put your tender tag through then your See, it's a little shorter that way you don't have as much play in it when you are wanting to move your knot it works so much better than when you set back down it just falls even though that's much shorter it'll just slide down the line until you get you need to adjust and you hold this right here and you just pull cinch put weight in it, it cinches it down and then you all you're doing is pulling the tag end of your tether or lineman's belt whatever and there you go that is uh, your hand tied eye to eye prusik or split tail or whatever tied eyed split tail and this is your uh, poor man's tender or DIY tender, whatever. And that's all you need is a little bit of paracord and uh, a key ring and uh, your uh, Prusik cord. And that's it. So I hope that helps y'all out. Uh, I hope y'all can see y'all could see it and uh, tell what I was doing maybe you can get some use out of it uh, if you buy one of these uh, split tails or eye to eye prusik cords whatever you're gonna run you anywhere from around 35 to 50 bucks depending on what it's made out of if you get a good one uh, you're looking at for right around 40 to 50 bucks about 38 or so depending on who you buy it from and all that good jazz um, if you buy some cheap cords you can get away a lot cheaper than that um, but that's also going to depend on what kind of rope you got it on to uh, this is the sterling op locks and this is the I forget what the name of it is, but it is Sterling Prusik Cord. This is eight millimeter op locks, and this is 6.5, six or 6.5 millimeter Prusik Cord that Sterling recommends for the op locks. And that's it, man. I hope, hope that helps y'all out. And uh, good luck. Uh, have a good season. Hope it's the best one ever. And uh, God bless y'all, and uh, we'll see you next time.